number of nuclear submarines, which he can tell you more about. I won't read them all. But uh, he retired as a, as a senior chief petty officer. He is currently, uh, not only he's also a great information source to what goes on on Kings Bay, being that he was at Kings Bay, knows everything that's happening there. And we found out one of the reasons why we can't go see some nuclear submarines is because at the time we showed up, they were moving missiles, and they don't allow you to go on a submarine when they're pulling nuclear weapons off of a submarine. Strange idea, but anyway, uh, we found out that. We also found out a lot of other things they wouldn't tell us at the submarine. Keith told us, and he's going to, and today we're honored to have him here with us. He is currently the executive director of the St. Mary's Submarine Museum in, uh, in St. Mary's, which is about five minutes from the nuclear submarine base. We had a chance, the 30 of us who were on the trip down there, to meet him, and he did a really phenomenal presentation. Actually, for all of us who were there, it was probably one of the most interesting presentations on submarines, and since we only have one submarine here, all of us who, quite honestly, knew nothing about really what the submarine corps, what they do, we were absolutely astounded to what they do, what goes on in that deal, because he's... One of the things I did find out that when they, the, one of the German submarines that were scuttled in World War II, he actually helped scuttle that and, and capture the Enigma machine. So he's going to tell you about that today, too. I'm kidding. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I want to bring Keith Post up. He, uh, he has got a great story to tell you. He has brought phenomenal stuff from it. Uh, he can tell you all about the Trident submarines, all that uh, we've lost a, a couple of submarines. I don't know how many of you know we actually lost two nuclear submarines. How many of you knew that? You knew two of them. All right, well, good. He's going to ask you what the names of those were. That'll be one of the quizzes today. And for that quiz, we have a special prize for you. If you're the answer, it can stand up first, and that'll come from John Vale in a special brown bag. Compliments of John Vale. So Keith, we'd love to have you up here. Thank you for pitching in today. He came all the way from St. Mary's. All right, buddy. Thank, Thank you, you Kurt. so much. I hope I got this hooked up right. Okay. I had a, a bad vision a few minutes ago. Some of you may have seen the news. I had to run and use the restroom because it's a, if you don't know, St. Mary's is as far as you can get in Georgia and still be in Georgia. So it's a five hour something ride and lots of coffee because I left at uh, about 5.30 this morning. So I figured before Kirk called me up here, I better go use the restroom. And while I was in there, all I could picture was that poor lady on city council out in California somewhere that left her mic on when she went to the restroom. So <laughs> hopefully I didn't do that today. I don't think I did, but anyway. <laughs> Um, before I get started, I want to I do something very special. Um, our World War II veterans, our submarine veterans, are very special to us as, as they are to everybody. And uh, I want to give this World War II veteran, sir, this is our museum coin. And thank you for your service, sir. Thank you. Honor to meet you. And I'm not going to break it. My mama would be proud if she were still here. I always told her my name would be in lights one day. That's pretty cool. I like that. I want to tell you a quick sea story. How many Navy guys do I got in here? All right, you all will appreciate this even more than the rest of you. I want to tell you a quick sea story. This is the commissioning uh, plaque from the USS Henry L. Stimson, which was one of our 41 for Freedom, our ballistic missile subs. And two years ago, a man by the name of Lori Riggs from Illinois called me up in the spring, about April time frame. And he said, we're having our reunion in Mobile, Alabama. We would like you to come, and we would like to give the museum the ship's plaque. Would you come as our guest and receive the plaque? And I said, absolutely. I'd be honored to, Lori. So it was the first weekend in October. I was all excited. We we're going to get to the Blue Angels Museum, tour the battleship Alabama, tour the USS Drum, have a great time. Happened the same time as the federal shutdown. No aviation museum, no, none of that stuff. We did get to go see the drum and the battleship because those are civilian run. So, uh, but anyway, so a month before I'm going over to this reunion, I get a phone call from Lori. He says, hey, since you're coming over to the reunion, how would you like to be the guest speaker at our banquet? Sound familiar, Kurt? 
I got a phone call last night that says, hey, since you're coming up to have lunch with us, how about being our guest speaker today? So I'm already prepared. <laughs> Actually, I'm very honored to be here, and uh, those of you that came down to Kings Bay, I hope you enjoyed yourself. I had a great time with you all. I'm very humbled to be in this room. And where's my one submarine guy back there? If I screw anything up, you got to correct me, all right? Keep me honest back there. Uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit about our museum, a little bit about submarine history, show you some pictures, and I brought some artifacts from the museum uh, that are here, and I'll share with you how we get some of them. It's really an awesome place. Um, I see if I remember how to do this. There we go. The Submarine Museum um, is in St. Mary's, Georgia, which is the very southeasternmost city in the state. When you look out our front door there, you're looking at Florida. The St. Mary's River is the dividing line. Anybody here been to Cumberland Island? The ferry boat leaves right across the street from the museum, so you know where it is. It's a great place. A couple of fast facts. We were commissioned 30 March 1996. We're getting ready to celebrate our 20th anniversary next March. Admiral Flucky, Gene Flucky, was our commissioning speaker. Unfortunately, he's since passed away. But we're getting ready to have a, a, a commemorative ceremony April 2nd, uh, next uh, spring, at the Waterfront Park right across from the museum. Our founding president was Sheila McNeil. Any of you that travel in Navy circles or with Senator Isaacson or up in DC working on Navy or military issues. Sheila is the only woman to ever serve as the national president of the Navy League since 1902. She is a, quite a phenomenal person and she's the reason why we have a museum. My predecessor was John Krause who was a, a retired uh, Master Chief. He unfortunately passed away in 2010 at the age of 58. I was on the board for about six years and uh, at the time I was a real estate agent, I own a small computer company, and where's the guy running for office back there? Don't do it, don't do it, run, run! I finished a four year stint on city council last year. Talk to me, I'll tell you all about it. But uh, at the time John died, I had, I had just been on council nine months, and when they tell you it's a part time job, yeah, no such thing. Anyway, John died of a massive heart attack at the Subvets Convention in Cincinnati, Ohio. And I told the newspaper when they called me, if he had scripted the end of his life, he would have not been wanted to be anywhere else than with his shipmates uh, if it was his time. So I got strong-armed by the lady in the third bullet up there. And as she tells Senator Isaacson, you will fund that new submarine. She told me, you will take over the museum interim at least. Said, yes, ma'am. So that was almost five years ago. And as I tell folks, I hate how I got the job, but I love being there. It is a true treasure. Uh, we have about 4,500 square feet of display space on two floors. Um, we have the largest collection of original World War II War Patrol reports. And I have some right here from the USS Batfish. This is from the first War Patrol, which ended 7 February 1944. We have the largest collection outside the Naval Archives. Don't tell any of my board members I took this out of St. Mary's. I will get fired tomorrow. So there's no press in here, is there? Okay. Note back there, make sure you pay attention to that when you're campaigning. Trust me, it'll come back to bite you if you don't. Uh, we are a 501c3. I have a 16 member board that I work for and uh, I've been director, as I said, since October uh, 2010. I want to tell you, uh, I come from a military family. My, how many Coast Guardmen in here? One Coast Guardman. Thank you, sir. You're looking at a Coast Guard brat. My dad served for 29 years in the Coast Guard, and uh, he has since forgiven me for going in the wrong outfit, as he puts it. Pearl Harbor, and the blue, blue back is in uh, Portland. And there's a couple others that I'm not remembering off the top of my head. Oh yeah, Razorbacks in Little Rock, the Cods in Cleveland. And anybody here from Oklahoma originally? Who can tell me what submarines in Oklahoma? I know. <laughs> Go figure, somebody from Georgia Tech probably engineered how to get it up there. The USS, yeah, now I forgot it, CS, I had a CRS moment. It's in, it's in uh, Muscogee, Muscogee, Oklahoma. The Batfish, excuse me, the USS Batfish is in Muscogee, Oklahoma, believe it or not. Oh. 
The Chicago one is a German U-boat. I forgot the number of it, but that's at the Museum of Science and History in Chicago. Great opportunity to see a German boat if you get a chance to be in Chicago. There's the Aspro battle flag. Um, another part of our World War II history, President George H.W. Bush was the youngest naval aviator when he got his commission. Uh, he was shot down over Chichijima. The USS Finback rescued him on 2 September 1944. This is a picture taken a month later, right when he was getting off. That's him in the middle, crouching down with his garrison cap on. That's on the wall near our periscope area. We have two pieces of a torpedo there. That's the uh, back end of a Mark 14. And on the other side, that black thing to the left is the top part of it. The fire chief wouldn't let me have the fuel tank in there. He has no sense of humor. So we had to have it in pieces. But if you stop at the, if you're coming back from Florida and you stop at the Georgia Welcome Center, we have a full-size torpedo out there on display outside of the Welcome Center. That belongs to the museum. And that, I, I've got to go up to EB one day and research what boat this came off of. I don't know which boat it came off of, but I have a close-up of the label there. It was made by Electric Boat, 1942. That's the torpedo inside the hatch from the submarine. I just don't know which one yet, but it's got a serial number, so I'm sure if I go up there, they're going to tell me what boat it was on. Downstairs, we also have a periscope. I notice um, Kurt had one on his video a little while ago. If you come down there, you get to see just like it looks like out of a submarine. It goes through our roof, and you can see across to Florida. Uh, it's a great attraction for the kids. And if you, I know I told you guys that were down there before, but if you see an article or news story on CNN that a crusty old retired senior chief got arrested for child abuse, don't pay attention to CNN. It was just me beating hell out of some kid for not minding himself and abusing my periscope. Because it's on loan to us from the Navy. It's one of the few things in the museum we don't actually own. And the reason why we do that, again, no press in here, right, is if the Navy gives it to me, then they can't come fix it for me. Since it's theirs, they can come work on it. One of those little things you got to do. There's some of our models that we have there. A couple of weeks ago, I was doing uh, some research to do a presentation to our Rotary Club. And as I said, I've been there about five years, but we have so much stuff, I do not know all of what we have still. And I came across this flag that we had. It is from the commissioning of the USS R1, which was commissioned, if I remember right, 1917, I believe. It says on the thing there, 1917. Number one ensign, R1, I believe it was 1917, the R1 was commissioned. That's a picture of what that submarine looked like. I can't imagine having to go to sea on that bad boy, but uh, that was the R1. So ship's bell, we have four ship's bells there. One of them is this one right here. And those of you that came to the museum, I shared with this how we got this. I don't know, I don't know how it got taken off the boat, but I do know how it made its way to the museum. And that's very special to me because that was my first submarine. I see USS Nathan Hale. Somebody knew I was on that boat and it showed up in the gift shop one day on the counter. I wasn't there. So no questions asked. As they say, possession is nine tenths of the law. <laughs> we have a collection of World War II battle flags. I brought one with me today. I just had framed recently. I got some grant money and we were able to frame a bunch of them that we have. And this is, is it okay to put it there? Or actually, you guys in the back can't see it if I do that. All right. This is a, and mind me, I was doing this at 3 o'clock this morning, so bear with me, because I forgot the name of the boat this came off of, but you'll notice something that you don't see in a lot of them. They took out a German boat. These are warships. These are merchant ships. The one up on the picture here, you'll see the same Oh, that is it. I'm sorry. I moved it. Oh, wait a minute. Whoa! You guys are messing with me back there. I'm only running on three cups of coffee. That's not nice. Uh, similar to this flag, this is the USS Hake. And I just want to point out to you a couple of things. You can set it down now if you want. A couple of things. If you look up here, you'll see there's a couple of circles that aren't filled in. That means they hit it, or they think they hit it, but it didn't go down. Some of the boats did a half a flag. Some of them did a half a circle. And again, the, different, the warships are up at the top, and these are merchant ships. We took out the merchant ships because they were supplying the troops. Something I want to point out to you, again, I did 22 and something years in the Navy. I got just shy of 1,500 days under the ocean. I can't imagine one depth charge being 400 feet underneath the ocean and having a bomb go off outside your hull. 
You see how many this ship survived? For those of you in the back, it's 875. And fittingly, appropriately enough, this submarine was part of the occupation force in Tokyo Bay at the end of the war. So, and in case you're wondering, the fish in the middle, all of our World War II submarines were named after fish. And I love this one, the USS Senate, you see in the middle, they got a question mark, they're not sure. Halibut, there's another one there, you see they have the half circles, full circles and half circles. Some of the other things we get, uh, we have commissioning plaques as I showed you, the, uh, the Stimson, this is a, a diesel boat, the Trout, which was commissioned after the war. This is the USS Sargo, which was commissioned uh, 1939. And I brought this with me. It's not mounted on anything yet. I got this shipped to me from a 90-year-old widow in California. So it was mounted on her fireplace. Her husband was the CEO of this boat. She called me up. She had heard about us. And she said, I wonder if you would want this. And I said, absolutely. Well, a couple of weeks ago, friends of hers were on a trip. And I had not got it mounted yet because I'm a busy one-man show. And I hadn't got to it yet, but I knew right where it was. They came in and said, uh, this lady Margaret sent us here to see a plaque on the Sargo. Do you, know, do you have that somewhere? I said, absolutely. So I went in the back and we made a picture and sent it to her. So uh, you never know how you're going to get stuff from people. I, want, I sh sh have this in here just to share with you the power of Facebook. We commissioned, as I said, in 96. This chairlift here to go to our second floor was donated by a funeral home that was remodeled. So it was used when we got it. Last year, right before, we do a World War II memorial every November. We have veterans come from all over the country. I have two World War II vets that fly from California to be with us. Last year, we had 22 submarine World War II veterans. And we had a nurse, a World War II nurse, 91, whose husband was a submariner. He had passed away the year before. And I invited her, and she came, and we recognized her at the ceremony. But the week before the ceremony, the damn chair broke. If you've ever priced one of these, they're not cheap. So I called a place to come get us a new one. And when they came up, they said, oh, you're commercial. I said, here's your sign. What part of submarine museum did you not understand? It is not a house. Well, we don't do commercial. So another week went by. Anyway, we got a new chair. And that's the mother of the commanding officer of the USS West Virginia last November riding our chair for the first one in the chair. $3,000 in three weeks on Facebook to put a new chair in the museum. Awesome response. That's a picture of our battle flag hallway. You can see the Hake picture uh, behind her head there. And there's some of the other flags that we have. We have photos of flags, and we have a lot of real ones. Upstairs is mostly nuclear navy. We have a few World War II display cases. That's a model of the USS Georgia in the middle. And uh, a lot of our Trident subs and some of our photos of missile launches and stuff, missile hatches, that's up in the back corner. On the other side, that is a model of the USS Buffalo. 715 is the biggest model we have in the museum. It's not the scale. That's about 360 feet. The Georgia's 560 feet, almost two football fields. That model is the biggest because my predecessor, that was his boat, he had the biggest model in the museum. <laughs> I hadn't got around to outdoing him yet, but I'm going to. Um, this is a picture, those of you that were down in Kings Bay, I'm sure rode by this. If you've ever been by the submarine base down there, this is the sail of the USS George Bancroft, which was one of our 41 for freedom. The submarine coming out of the ground is actually concrete. Through the museum, we raised money, about $70,000 as I recall, to build that memorial and was commissioned in April of 2000 on the 100th anniversary of the submarine force. And this is a shadow box right outside my office um, on the Bancroft, uh, the history of the Bancroft, commissioning photos, and that little red-handled thing on the black cord on the right side of the case, that is the weapons officer firing key from the, the missile firing key out of the weapons officer safe in the missile control center. And there's the plaque I just showed you. And this is our library. And I want to, I know I don't have to tell you all this, but the power of connections, who you know, who you meet, Sheila, the lady I talked about earlier, who is the reason why we have a museum, met this man named Jack Schiff. Have you all seen commercials on TV lately? I didn't know they did these commercials, but I saw them a, a little bit lately. Cincinnati Financial Insurance Group, there's a couple of commercials going on. He was the founder of that. He met Sheila somewhere, and when we were building the museum, he gave us some Cincinnati financial stock as an investment to help us finish the museum. Well, since we've been in existence, 
and he passed away. We named the library in his honor in, 90, in uh, 98, when, after he passed away. His sons have continued his legacy. We get a $35,000 grant check from them every year. Jack was not a submariner, but he was in the Navy in World War II, and he came to visit the museum after we first opened, and he loved what we were doing there, and he made a commitment to us, and his sons have kept that going. We have a submarine, USS Georgia. I wore the appropriate colors today. No offense to my Georgia Tech friends, but, and I'm a Florida Gator fan, so don't throw rocks, but uh, I'm from Florida. But anyway, we have the USS Georgia. Uh, it's one of our two SSGNs down there. They were, the oldest four Trident subs were taken offline. The Georgia was returned to service in 2008. I was the uh, co-chairman of the committee, and uh, we had about 3,000 people. Was anybody at the ceremony? We had a lot of people from Atlanta down there. We got a lot of support from the Atlanta area, Coca-Cola and a few others. We raised about $100,000 to put this whole thing on when we brought the ship back. But the phenomenal thing about this vessel and the other three like it, the Ohio and the Michigan are on the West Coast, the Georgia and the Florida are in Kings Bay, where we used to have 24 missiles, uh, or the capability of carrying 24 missiles, we now have the capability of having 154 tomahawks on that submarine. The first two tubes are lockout chambers, so we can launch SEALs and special operations forces out of them. They have a dry dock shelter. You can't really see it too well, but underneath the patch, there's a picture. There's a little black thing on the back of the submarine. That door opens and a mini sub comes out. They can pull out outboard motors and rafts and all kinds of other fun stuff that they do. Phenomenal platform. You don't read a lot about what they do because it's all classified. Good question, I'm sorry. SSBN stands for Submarine Ship Ballistic Nuclear. SSGN, the G stands for guided. That means it carries guided missiles, Tomahawk cruise missiles, just like surface ships and just like our fast attacks. It's a very good question. SSN is a fast attack, submarine ship nuclear. If it's just SS, it's a diesel boat. So we only have SSNs, SSGNs, and SSBNs. Now, we do not have any diesel boats whatsoever. That's the... This is how you know, I know I don't have to tell you all anything, this is how you know you're getting older. This is the commanding officer of the USS Wyoming. <laughs> and he, and I said, sir, no offense, but are you shaving yet? <laughs> he, uh, great guy, he's from New York, he's got a great sense of humor, his name is Ke uh, Kenny Curtin, and uh, that's his box right in, be in between him and I. So I showed him his box and I said, there you go, sir, it's yours to put whatever you want in it. And, uh, Welcome aboard, but he's a great guy, but man, talk about making me feel old and chubby. Whew. And we also have some surface ships there. This is a model of the USS Canopus. The Canopus was a submarine tender. Kings Bay was its last home port before it was decommissioned, and uh, that was John's last command. So that we have a great model of that. It's a beautiful model, a lot of intricate work on that. And uh, we have a case in tribute to all the submarine tenders that have serviced our submarines over the years. We only have two left. One is in Guam and one is in Diego Garcia. Back to the Georgia for a second, our, our SSGNs forward deploy. What I, what I mean by that is when they leave Kings Bay, our boats go all the way around the world to Diego Garcia. And if you look at a globe, that's about 180 out from Georgia. Our two boats on the west coast from the Bangor submarine base, they go to Guam, the Ohio and the Michigan. And we keep them on station for between 15 to 18 months, and we rotate the crews. We fly the crews back and forth, because each submarine has two crews, a blue crew and a gold crew. We do that for a couple of reasons. One, it keeps the boat on station longer, which gives the combatant commanders out there access to weapons and, and special forces. And two, it saves gas. Even though they're nuclear powered, when you drive that submarine back and forth across the ocean, you wear out the, the uh, reactor faster. So by keeping them on station over there longer, we, we uh, make the ship last longer, hopefully. We have a Russian display case upstairs. Those of you uh, will, uh, We'll remember in 2000, the Russians lost a submarine up in the North Sea, the Kursk. The, they didn't let us help them. We could have helped save some of those guys. There were some guys still alive on the boat. The reason why we know that, it was salvaged. They found notes that the crew had left to their families. Um, but we did help them after the fact, apparently. And this is a navigation light off the Kursk. And below the silver plate on the bottom is a diver's plate. They were presented to the American Embassy in Moscow, and it found its way to our museum. The Russians come as still part of the treaty that we have with them. We go over to Russia, they come over here, even though Putin and Obama ain't getting along too well these days because Putin's an idiot. But anyway, um, the Russians still come to Kings Bay. There are four places.
they go to? The base to do their inspections, Walmart to get new jeans, Lang's restaurant to get great seafood and shrimp, and the St. Mary's Submarine Museum. And I told the guys that were down there last time, I'm holding you all to the same thing, no telling, but they brought me a bottle of vodka last time. And the guy says, for you, not museum, you, take home. <laughs> this is our foreign display case. We get a lot of foreign subs that pull into Kings Bay. And last year, uh, in the very top uh, left corner over there is the wooden plaque we got from the HMS Ambush, which is one of the British uh, Navy's fast attack submarines. Uh, they pulled in, they were in and out for about three weeks, and held, we held a reception for them there. And I'll tell you a quick sea story about the Brits. Any of y'all serve with Brits? You know you don't try to drink them under the table, right? Because you'll lose every time. Well, we had a reception at the museum, and we talked to the coxswain, who is like the chief of the boat on an American sub. We said, we'd like you to have about 20, 25 of your sailors down, and, and we're going to have some you know, guys off our base and our mayor and community leaders, so they were, they thought this was going to be a stuffed shirt kind of thing. And I said, what would you like? We'll get whatever you want. Pizza and beer. That's what they wanted. So we got pizza and beer. Receptions from six to eight. They came in their whites, about 25 of them. They had a ball. Y'all that were at the museum know downstairs we have the diving stand by the periscope. I got pictures of the Brits drinking beer, sitting in there driving the submarine. They had a blast. Six to eight, right? 9.30, we ran out of beer. Just so happens there's a pub next door. At midnight, me and the XO of the submarine are doing karaoke. So the Brits are a lot of fun when they come to visit. On a more serious note, one of the, uh, uh, Kurt mentioned this earlier, we lost two submarines since World War II, the USS Thresher and the USS Scorpion. This is a tribute case to the Thresher. And this is another example of how we get stuff donated to the museum. I had just taken over the museum a couple of weeks after I started. I'm drinking from a fire hose trying to figure out how to, I just was just trying to keep the doors open and not get in trouble, basically. Who knew you had to file sales tax with the state? I mean, you know, all kinds of things I got to do. Anyway, um, this lady came in with a cardboard box. And she was with her daughter. She lived down in St. Augustine. Her husband had passed away. He retired as a Navy captain. He was a medical officer. He, he was CEO of the Naval Hospital in Orlando when he uh, retired. He had passed away, and he had saved this box, and she brought it up to us. And in this box were all these articles and mementos from the Thresher. He was the commissioning medical officer on the Thresher. Back when the nuclear Navy first started, you, am I getting the hook? Oh, no, no. I have a, we have a question. We're, this is our quiz today. You're making me nervous. All right. Um, <laughs> uh, um, what first range of, were you in, first off? I was an Army aviator. And I got to get far and I can drink it. with any of them. We do have a, we do have a question. For you, for you um, guys that said you know about submarines, the Marine guys, or somebody in here suggested, here's the quiz for you. Uh, off which coast did the Thresher sink? Stand up if you know the answer. Stand up if you know the answer. Raise your right hand if you know the answer. All right, you're first. Go ahead. Landing. Is he correct? He is. All right, get him. You get a prize. All right, the next one. The other submarine. Hold on before you go. Let me ask you. It went down off of Cape Cod, um, about 250 miles south of Cape Cod, but it had come out of Kittery, Maine. It was in the shipyard. It was doing deep depth, deep depth trials with the surface ship, the USS Skylark. Okay. April 10th, 1963. All right, the second ship that the uh, boat that went down was the name? Scorpion. Scorpion. Yeah. All right, tell me where it sunk. If you can stand up, raise your hand. Where did it sink? Correct. Yep. You win the next prize, Mr. Herb. <clears throat> Congratulations. That's our two quizzes for the day, and I'll let you continue on. Okay. Okay. Um, let me answer that in a second. Can you put my thing back on there a second? Let me finish the thresher first, and then I'll go back to your question. So the um, ooh. So this medical officer back then, when the nuclear navy started, every submarine had a medical doctor on board. Now we have navy corpsmen, but back then it was a medical officer, and Mr. Rem was the medical officer, and he had saved all of this stuff. And so since then, the museum built a relationship with the folks up in Kittery. No, oh, it's later on. I'll show it to you later on. Remember the thresher. I'm going to show you a picture in a second. 
Scorpion, I'm going to talk about. If you'll hold your question, I'll get to it. I have a picture of it here. That's why I want to wait. You know how things happen? When I, John, unlike me, was a pack rat. It, the, my office, it, it was so bad you could not get in. John worked outside on the, on the conference table on his laptop because he couldn't get to his desk. I never could understand that. Five years later, I understand it because I can't get to my desk right now. <laughs> but while we were cleaning out the storeroom, I found this picture. And it was sort of like destiny. This is a commissioning photograph of the USS Nebraska. I was on the commissioning crew of the Nebraska. I also had the honor of serving on the USS Omaha. So it was pretty cool I got to serve on both the Omaha and the Nebraska. And if you look in the very bottom corner of that picture is a young man that looks as young as that captain that wasn't shaving yet. So it was sort of like destiny. So I hung that in my office wall to remember how I got there. This is the Thresher Memorial. I'm sorry. This is the um, Nautilus Museum up in Groton. If, has anybody been to the Nautilus Museum up in Groton? Awesome place. They do, that, that is an official Navy museum funded by the government. It's operated by the government. A lieutenant commander is the OIC up there. We sponsored a brick out there to help them with their fundraising. And I was up there in October and got a picture of our brick. This is the Thresher Memorial. And right in the middle there, you see St. Mary's Submarine Museum. And right next to us to the right is President George H.W. Bush. The Thresher went down April 10th, 1963. The town of Kittery, two years ago on the 50th anniversary, erected a 129-foot flagpole in the Route 1 circle there. If you drive on 95, you can see it from the interstate. It is a tremendous memorial. And just off the circle, they built a memorial, which this is part of. President Bush wrote the first check to help them build that memorial, and we sponsored a brick, and we were put right next to it. We're right dead center in the thing. I don't know how we got so fortunate, but uh, I was there for the dedication last Memorial Day. And the year before, I was there for the flagpole dedication and the 50th anniversary ceremony. I want to paint you a little picture real quick, and you tell me if I get going too long, because I could talk about this all day, and I know some of you probably got to get back to work. I'll give you about another five or six minutes, but you can stay here after. Okay, yeah, I'll stay after and let you look at stuff and answer any questions you might have, but. Picture this as an auditorium, maybe about twice this size. I had VIP seating for the 50th anniversary of the Thresher Memorial. I was sitting right next to the union president from the shipyard, Paul. We were front row seats in the VIP section. And I don't say this because I'm anybody special. I'm not, but I want to illustrate something for you. And here's VIP seating. And where the man with the camera is is the stage. From here to the stage are almost 700 family members of those 129 guys. You talk about a moving experience. It's sort of like when you see tornado on TV. When you go to the place and see the destruction it done, you can appreciate it much more. Being at that memorial did it for me. It's a I met the son of the Cobb. I met a lot of people there. It was a very moving experience. So we have a great relationship with them up there, and we're happy to support them. And there's a picture of the memorial. Any of Masons here? The Masons did the corner block ceremony right there. You can see some of them in the foreground of the picture. And the submarine on the piece of granite there, the brass plaque has all the crew members listed. And that submarine was in the garage of one of the um, wives. The flagpole in the back. The CEO of the Thresher was a man named John Wesley Harvey, up and coming naval officer, fantastic man. And his wife, Irene, never remarried. They had five, uh, five children. Uh, no, I'm sorry, got my officers mixed up. Two children, I believe. And their sons uh, erected that flagpole behind the uh, stone in honor of their father and mother, because Irene passed away last year. And the USS Alexandria, which is one of our fastest sex submarines, took her ashes to bury where the Thresher went down. So she and John are reunited. As part of this job, I get to travel around a little bit, come to places like this. And uh, last year, I was at the Naval Submarine League. This is Admiral T Joe Tafalo. He used to be our group commander in Kings Bay. He's now uh, next in line to be our submarine force commander. Uh, President Obama just nominated him a couple months ago uh, to succeed Admiral Mike Connor. And uh, he's a great guy. 
going to do great things for us. This is Master Chief Rick West. I met him up uh, in D.C. last October. He's a great submariner, and he was the 12th Master Chief Petty Officer of the Navy. You never know when you're going to run into people. He and I were at the change of command together. Great supporter of the museum. Last October, I was up in Connecticut. This is the, our newest submarine, the USS North Dakota. The North Dakota was commissioned on October 25th, and this is the commissioning book from it. You can take a look uh, when I get done talking. Awesome, awesome platform. Our next one is going to be the USS John Warner, which gets commissioned in Norfolk on uh, August 1st in a couple of weeks. I'll be there for the commissioning of that submarine. These are Virginia class. They are incredible platforms. Last September, it's one of your brethren there, shipmate. The guy on the right is Tony Fiella from Rhode Island. He's 92, I believe. He and his wife Betty drive down every November for our World War II Memorial. I didn't expect to find him in San Francisco last year at our submarine veterans convention, but he was there and a World War II veteran uh, that I had never met before. I met there at the uh, convention. We have a great relationship with the base. These are chief selectees two years ago. Uh, they came for a work day at the museum. Uh, this is before they got full of paint because they painted the building for me. So we took a group shot before they got all dirty. Another great World War II veteran. This is Paul Casadant on the left. And this is Al Singelman on the right in the white shirt. He's our Subvets National Commander. This was last November at our memorial. Paul is 92. He served 20 something years in the Navy. And I'll share a quick sea story with you. Two, two years ago, when he came, after the war, he was on the USS Tusk. Anybody in here know about the Tusk and the Cachino? 19, sub guy, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it was 49, if I remember right. 1949, the Cachino was up in the North Atlantic, had a battery explosion. Subsequently had another explosion. The captain ordered to abandon ship. The Tusk, which Paul was a crew member on, went over to rescue the guys off of the Cachino. They scuttled the ship, and they got everybody off the ship except one civilian who was a scientist on there. Apparently, they weren't able to get him off the boat for some reason. The Tusk lost six crew members over the side trying to rescue all the guys off the Cachino. One of the guys rescued off the Cachino was a World War II sub-vet by the name of Al Smith. He's from Tennessee. And Al and Paul hadn't seen each other since then, and they ran into each other at the reunion, and they looked at each other across the room. Again, it's one of those Kodak moments. You can't write this stuff. And they hadn't seen each other since they rescued. Paul pulled that guy off that boat. And uh, it's just a very special place. A lot, of, a lot of great memories get made there. Paul lives in Cocoa Beach, Florida, and he'll, uh, he'll be up again in November for our memorial. This guy here in the middle in the blue shirt, he's um, from the Atlanta area here. He's a pilot. And his father is a retired Greek admiral. And what he's got there is his little iPad thing here or whatever. We did a, a video conference by Skype, the first Skype interview from the museum to England, to his dad who lives over in England. And uh, his dad came over to New London and one of the diesel boats that we sold Greece, he took across the ocean. And he has since sent me a bunch of photographs. I, the name of the boat escapes me at the moment, but you never know who's gonna walk in the door. And that, where's my Coast Guard man in the back? That's Mass Chief Oakley Post. That's my dad right there. Sea Cadets. We do a lot with Sea Cadets and NGRTC students. They're there in front of the museum. The base comes and helps us do all sorts of projects. We get VIPs come down there. That's Congressman Kingston. There's the British CEO that his XO and I karaoke the night away. That's at the reception. We host WISE groups there. This is the Florida WISE group a couple of months ago holding an event on a Saturday night while their husbands were deployed. Um, it's a halfway night celebration. The guys do halfway night out at sea. They do halfway night here. We host all kinds of events here. This is uh, Sheila McNeil and the two, the incoming and the outgoing uh, refit CEOs talking about education and workforce development. Midshipman from the Naval Academy coming to learn about submarine from the crusty old senior chief. That's the USS Lafayette reunion. Council General, General of India from Atlanta came for a tour. I gave him a book about the Thresher, a reenlistment. My Marine buddies here, last year we have an open house in Smithsonian Magazine Day. We had the Marines do an exhibit out in front from the base. 
And that's my dentist giving me a donation since I give him a lot of donations. <laughs> Uh, promotion ceremony for one of our chiefs who got promoted to LDO. We support the Dolphin Scholarship Auction. There's some of my board members. We had an Animal Greener Day, who's also a submariner. By the way, yesterday marked the 30th anniversary of the commissioning of Honolulu. Admiral Greenert, who's the CNO right now, was the CEO of the Honolulu. Admiral Haney, who's head of Stratcom, was CEO of the Honolulu. And the new incoming CNO, Admiral Richardson, was CEO of the Honolulu. Kind of an interesting tidbit. We also do tributes to our World War II veterans. This is Bill Castleberry. He passed away two years ago. He was our last surviving president of the submarine veterans of World War II, the Georgia chapter. Uh, this is our gift shop. I, I feel Kurt staring at me, so I've got to go fast here. My favorite hat. Are these Marines bigger than me? They could be. <laughs> There's our challenge coin. And I'm sharing with you a paid political announcement here before Kirk yanks me off the stage. We're celebrating our 20th anniversary, as I said. Those are five highlights on the back. Our Ben Bastora collection, the Schiff Foundation, Admiral Flucky, John, and the library. That's our 20th anniversary coin, which is on order right now. They'll be for sale down there to help us raise money for the museum. We're only making 500 of them, and they'll all be numbered. That's our World War II memorial on the base. That's our Facebook page. If any of you do Facebook, this is from yesterday. As I mentioned, the Honolulu. Uh, I try to post history updates two or three times a week and events. You all were on the Facebook page when you came down to visit. And there you are. Oh, amazing. Scorpion. Where's the man that asked me about Scorpion? I'm almost done, uh, Kurt. No, no, right ahead. I want some questions to come to you before we leave here. So The Scorpion went down south of the Azores in the middle of the Atlantic and went down May 22nd, 1968. Wally Bishop was the cob of the Scorpion. His son John and I served together in Kings Bay. His son John was a sonarman like me. He has since retired, and his sister is a Navy captain. This is a photograph of the rudder and stern planes. And if you look closely, you can see what pressure does to a submarine when it goes below its design depth. All of those uh, panels on the on the rudder, uh, I mean on the planes, are all pushed in. Depending on what book you read, the official Navy analysis is that it was a torpedo malfunction of some sort. There was a Russian submarine in the area. Depends on what book you read. I don't know if in my lifetime we'll really know the real answer. What really matters is that 99 men lost their lives on that boat, and we don't ever forget that. And this is, uh, this is Keith's theory. Indulge me one more minute, Kurt. This is Keith's theory. I tell this to all of the, the, the um, midshipmen when they come to the museum. 1968, if you think back to 68, and you all know it better than me, I was only nine at the time, but 1968, in April, Martin Luther King was assassinated. In June, Bobby Kennedy was assassinated. The Vietnam War was in full swing. All of our citizens were protesting all over the place. We had race riots at the conventions in Chicago and Miami, I believe. Oh, and somewhere in the middle of all this, we lost a submarine with 99 men in May. I think that's why a lot of people don't know about the Scorpion. It's because there was so much other turmoil going on in our nation at the time. Last Memorial Day, I had the honor of speaking at the Scorpion Memorial in Newport News. They have a monument there. And Again, family members of those 99 men, they don't ever forget. Uh, so it's important that we remember. So I appreciate you asking the question. There's lots of books that you can read about it. If you Google it, there's an official Navy report you can get your hands on. There's our uh, information. If you want to join the museum, we'd be happy to have you as a member. As I said, look on Facebook. Our new website is going to debut, hopefully. I'm keeping my fingers crossed at the end of next week. And if you happen to be down in our neck of the woods, the last Saturday of September, we have an open house. We have guest speakers. I'm trying to get the divers um, and the EOD folks to do a display in front of the museum. Last year, as I mentioned, we had the Marines. The year before, we had the Coast Guard. Uh, so it's a great place. And that is my all presentation. Right, um, all right, great. All right, before we break, I know we have to go to a board meeting and Brian Tate's on my back to make sure I'm punctual. But since you spent so much time and they really coming up here,
and pitching in today. Uh, you really saved us, and we want to thank. First time we've ever had a submariner show up. Make sure you tell Senator Isaacson I saved his bacon today. <laughs> He better, he better cough up some cash from those submarines we need. Here's what I'm going to suggest. He's got some great stuff up here for you guys to see. Uh, what I'd like to do uh, is, instead of holding personal questions going around, let you all come up. He'll stay here as long as you want. But before we leave, we do have a couple things for you. As you know, we're always into the idea of giving gifts and so on. And since you were so gracious to uh, give us one of your uh, challenge coins, here you are, buddy. That's one of ours. Thank you, thank you so thank much. Thank you so much. And we also have a great book here, too, that we now, this one, you'll enjoy reading this. Now, AWOL, The Unexcused Absence of America's Upper Class from the Military Service. You probably know all about that anyway. But anyway, we'd like to give that to you as well. And thank you, Keith. Thank you, Kurt. Great, very, thank very, you very much. much. All right, and before I leave, uh, Ron Sherman wants to make sure over on the right hand side, there's a pair of, uh, a pair of how do you say it? I have a panorama that I shot at the memorial and uh, at the uh, cemetery on Memorial Day. It's about seven or eight photos put together. What I did on our website is we have the panorama, but I also made it available for each of the frames. So it, the picture you're in is the, probably the second one, uh, third one from the right. You can download it and make an 8x10 print if you want, it, but that's your job to do. I've done my part. But it's, it's on the website. It's the whole panorama is there, but the individual eight, it's eight by twelve. You can crop it to eight by ten uh, at your leisure. Very good. Well, gentlemen, ladies, thank you for coming today. Keith, you're going to be here for a good while if Absolutely. you want to. So, thank you very much. Meeting is officially adjourned. <laughs>